Thank you. Appreciate y'all having me. Uh, it's nice getting out the office. Uh, tell you that. So anytime I get a chance to stand up and be around people, like I miss this part, you know, just being able to have meetings and eat. You've been normal life? It's been normal life. You know, it's, it's, a, it's different, but thankful. Thankful. Thank y'all for having me. Uh, this won't take too, too long. I just want to run through a little bit about what we do or what I do and a little bit about our company and how we can Fit within y'all's process and kind of help each other out along the way. Uh, so before we get started, I didn't want to talk a little bit about me. So a little something about me. I'm a stranger coming in. I'm big on personalities. And so like I'm an ENFJ, if y'all are familiar with Myers-Briggs, pretty much that just means I'm very active. I'm very hyper, like all the time. Uh, make friends with the trees, my motto. And so I love to talk and interact with people. Everyone has an interesting story. I just love to hear it. And I love to pull out the best in people. And so that's my daily mission every day. I say, if I can make you smile, if I can make you feel good about yourself, like you're worth something, then that, that makes my world. And so that is my heartbeat behind that. Also, my Enneagram 3, we did a lot of personality tests. That just means I don't like losing at anything. Wow. Um, yeah, so I was fortunate, high school, state athlete, went to play in college. And so competing is just something that I'm used to doing. I love competing. Uh, went to Sam Houston State, uh, where I got my bachelor's and then got my master's in project management and operations. Completely different than insurance, but pandemic makes you pivot a lot. Yeah. And so you'd be thankful, then you just pivot. Uh, but I got my master's in operations and project management. And so I was very proud of that. Sports fanatic, uh, grew up in sports. I have a uh, family that are playing professional football right now, so I keep up with them. Cousins that are playing like Texas Tech and LSU, so I kind of keep up with them as well. But football, basketball, baseball, track, anything with a ball, uh, I love watching. I love watching. I didn't know if this was a word, so I just put workout a holic because I love working out. It's, uh, I just love staying in shape. I'm all about being healthy. I love to eat whatever I want, but I got to put in the work to be able to eat whatever I want. And so, <laughs> and so I love it. I love it. Life learner, I love reading books. This started about four years ago. Uh, I just follow a lot of successful people. And I'm like, what do y'all do? How did y'all get to where you are? They're like, we read. We read articles. We read journals. I didn't used to like to read at all. But I was like, if I want to grow, mm -hmm. I need to do something uncomfortable that's going to help me get to the next level. And so I have reading goals every year. Uh, I read about 24 books a year. And just, yeah, I love it. It's nice to be able to relate to different people. And then I'm a newlywed. So we got married in November. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> and we're having another one <laughs> in April. So she were having a bigger one with like family and friends. This one. Well, I thought you were talking about baby. Oh, oh no. Having another Her biggest thing was like, we're not having a baby until after the wedding. I want to be able to enjoy myself at the wedding. I was like, respect. Because yeah. I would regardless. But I was like, all right, I see. I'm not, I won't be selfish. But we're having family and friends and everyone there. So it'll be a nice, you know, just big celebration. And so we're excited about that. Um, but just moving on a little bit, just to talk more about like how we can fit into, uh, into your process. Actually, let me see. There it is. Yep. But before I dive in, I want to talk a little bit about Goosehead and like, mm -hmm. what is Goosehead, where it's from? I think I forgot to include this in here. So we started in 2003. So Mark and Robin Jones, they're like, Hey, let's make insurance fun. Let's disrupt the industry. Let's get a more client focus, you know? And so some carriers will charge extra amount for this person's credit score and another company can charge this amount based on their credit score and so like just finding the perfect fit for the client is what we specialize in and so we're a brokerage so we work with over 80 plus carriers nationwide we have over 12,000 agencies across the nation Houston is very large we actually have about four or five different branches here and the little sub agencies like spread out throughout everywhere. So we're all over the place, you know, but we love what we do. We get to interact with people. We get to help them. My biggest thing is just finding, hey, what fits your financial lead? Let me see what I can do for you. You know, very transparent. I feel like if I'm gonna do something, I wanna be transparent and I wanna have fun with it. And so I bring 
Personality to insurance is what I tell people. But so fitting into your process. So these are things that I put together that I recommend that, um, you know, you ask your insurance agent, um, like, hey, my client needs help. These are just questions that I normally get on a daily basis. It's like, what is the flood zone determination for this house? Like, if you can't find any information, you can always ask me, hey, look, can you look up this flood zone determination for this house? Are they in X? Are they in AE? Like, where are they at? Mm -hmm. Like, that is something we can do. Hey, this client is looking to purchase this house. Can you get a ballpark uh, number or premium that the house would be if they decided to purchase this house? That is something we can run as well. Our system is fast. And so I can get at least four to five quotes out in about an hour. And so with all the carriers we work with, it's just super fast. And we're like, here you go, here you go. I always get my top carriers uh, based on the person, based on the location of their house that they're trying to purchase. So that's something else we can do. Uh, also, just to be an extension of the client experience. We know y'all do a great job building up your personal network and that's something I respect deeply. I was like, hey, I can help out your client, but I just want you to know, I understand the hard work that goes into your profession, like how you're trying to build up your network, your clientele. And so just being an extension of your, of your uh, process, you know, whether that's just, hey, can you just run this quote for me? If, even if it's no guarantee that we're going to use you, but it's like, I just need to see where this client is going uh, is going to fit but with their premium wire. Also, one of the favorite things I love getting asked, um, people ask me, it's like, when are you taking me to happy hour? Uh, we love it. I mean, I love it. Whether it's happy hour, whether it's just dinner, lunch, you know, coffee in the morning, whatever it is, like, yes, I'm an insurance guy. Hello. Welcome. Come on in. Yeah. Hi. It's like, I know I'm your insurance guy, but it's like, I also love building relationships. Like, I want to get to know you outside of your, outside of your profession. Yeah. Welcome. Nice face and ass. It's awesome. And so we want to be, I want to be friends. Like I want to do business with people that I can say, hey, like this person's awesome. Like, let's go grab coffee. Let's go grab lunch. Like, tell me about your kids. Tell me about your, your marriage or your spouse. Like, how's it going? And that's something that I strive to do on a daily basis is just to meet people. So I want to do business with people that I enjoy being around. I should have called you last week. <laughs> what would you have done? <laughs> so I like that you said, what's the flood zone determination? Mm -hmm. That's something like a, a something you have access to. Okay. Yeah. So it's a report we can run based on the house. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, for instance, I just helped a client in spring, they're in flood zone X, which means they don't require flood insurance for their home. But with Harvey, I just kind of explained, like, hey, you know, 60% of Houston pretty much flooded. Like, that didn't even expect to flood. I said, it's something worth looking into. I don't ever force it on them. Like, you need to get this. But I said, it's something worth looking into to pr further protect your home, other than your home premium. But having flood insurance, like, you can raise up. You can have up to 250,000 uh, contents that are covered from a flood. Mm -hmm. Or we can always adjust it. But I just tell them, hey, it's worth looking into like just let me it's run it's only about four hundred dollars more right it's not very it, expensive yeah, it, for what it's worth correct like and it depends on the area like the further south to go the more expensive it is like uh league city yeah like league city dickinson like areas like that flood insurance will be a lot higher just because you're closer to the water but like spring you're so far away that it won't be as expensive and so on average you have anywhere between four to six fifty just depending on the location Okay. It's a great question. So when to refer your client? So let's say you have a client, they're looking for insurance. It's like, when do you refer them to an insurance agent if they don't have it already? That's my first point. So when they come in, when they don't come in with insurance already, if they're like, okay, I need to get insurance, that's a good time. You can just reach out. Hey, this person is looking for insurance. What can you do for them? Like, you know, obviously, if you have your own uh, resources as well for people to do insurance, I just say, just let me be an extension. Just let me run a rate. If it works out, that's perfect. If you decide to go with somebody else, that's perfectly fine too. Just an opportunity just to get you a few rates back the way the care or the client has an opportunity to make their decision. It's like, oh, well, this is great. They offer all of these water coverages, but this carrier does not, you know, and it gives them an opportunity to like compare or compare. Uh, when they need a breakdown of home coverages, 
I'm very thorough. And so whenever I talk to a client, I'm like, okay, hey, this is coverage A, dwelling. Do you know what that is? And they're like, no. I said, so let's say your house burns down and you need to rebuild it from scratch. Insurance will give you this amount of money mm -hmm. to build it, to restore it to its state. And like, oh, and then I literally break it down. And if they have questions, I can address it right there. But I'd rather take my time with them than to rush it through like, here, this is it, this is it, this is it, here's your premium. I'm like, no, we'll go through everything. If it sounds great, perfect. If you need me to adjust something, I can always go back and do that. And also when to refer to client, uh, I, always, I love saying this, when the closing is happening yesterday. So if it's like an ASAP, they need insurance today or tomorrow. They're closing on a house, something fell through, what can you do? Got it, send the client. If you have their number, great. I can call them, get information that I need and I can run a rate right there for them. And so that's always another good reason to send it over. It's like, if you're having that kind of, cause it does happen. I didn't realize it happens that much, but people are, I'll have loan officers. They're like, hey, they're closing like today. Something fell through. I need a home policy for them. Like, what can you do? And that's where I love to help. I'm like, well, thanks for reaching out for one. <laughs> Appreciate it. But yeah, this is what I can do for them. And then I'm able to set them up right then and there. Any questions? Y'all have any questions? No, I was going to ask. Yes. So when we went to closing for our house, mm -hmm. we needed to get the flood insurance and it was reimbursed to us by the builder. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry about that. Um, but then they said within a year, we're going to be off the flood plan because mm -hmm. I guess with the construction, is that normal? It it does happen. I don't see it happen as much, but yeah, sometimes it, it does happen. And if that ever does, if you know early on, I mean, you can let, if you have an insurance person or if you have your home policy, um, let's say it's State Farm, just contact them and let them know, hey, this is what's what's going on. That way they're aware of it as well. And you can start that process early. Uh, you can talk to them. They can get in touch with their insurance agent or someone there that can start looking into that for you. That way it's not like, okay, we got to get flood insurance now. Because typically what happens on closings, I always recommend, especially if they're like, further down south, hey, get your insurance, like you can send it to your escrow account, uh, depends on if it's in the flood zone. And yes. I was like, you should do that because if you don't do it before closing, then you have to wait 30 days, 30 day wait period after you close on your house to get your flood insurance kicked in. And I was like, the reason why they do that is because they don't want people to get their house and then all of a sudden a storm's coming next week and they're like, oh, let's buy flood insurance because it's supposed to flood. And then that way, yeah. yeah. And that, no, yeah. And, and so, but yeah, that's a great question. Like it, very, it rarely happens that I've seen, but it has happened. Because they will redraw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good. I like it. I like a dialogue. So it's fun. I know. So when we run all the rates and stuff, so when we uh, we're looking for insurance, perfect insurance for the client, these are some of the most important factors that all of our carriers rate on. The age of the roof. So typically if it's under 15 years, a lot of our carriers will take it. They're like, yes, we can do that. It's a newer roof because you don't see people getting roofs changed like every two to three years. If they do, let me know who they are and what profession they're in because they're doing really well. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if the house was built before 1980s, some carriers won't accept homes if they're built after like a 40 year or 30 year period. If it's been like 20 or 30 or 40 years while the house has been built, some of them won't take it. Great thing about it is we work with over 80 plus carriers. So there's a lot of carriers that do, which makes it easier for clients to get insurance. Pools, uh, diving boards and slides. I didn't know this was a big thing until I started working at insurance, but it is true. Some carriers will require like, if you have a pool, is it fenced in? Or do you have a fence around your home? Cause it, it protects you, you know, or if you have a trampoline, it's a trampoline netted in, you know, for protection because that's how a lawsuits can happen. Um, someone jumping on your trampoline that's a friend or a family member yes. or a cousin, and they fall off and hurt themselves. It's a sue happy world now. It's like, sorry, like I am suing, you know, and so protection. So a lot of carriers looking at that. So like pools, trampolines, diving boards, do you have the uh, adequate protection, you know, to prevent like a lawsuit or something like that? Truly. And so, and then the other one, ah, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, it's right there. It says foundation. Foundation. Oh, that's important. 
Like yeah. Oh, yeah. Right so yeah. foundations, yeah, <laughs> depends on how the house is built. There we go. So it depends on how the house is built. Uh, if it's built on slab, that's what majority of the carriers look, look for. They're like, yes, ma'am. Going to say pure and beam mm -hmm. in Dallas, that was huge. Pure, and yes, beam. pure and beam, and even yeah, and down here too. It's like carriers were rate right based on it. They're like, okay, well, we might have to charge a little higher, like the sturdy, uh, the foundation's not as sturdy, or like so. They look into that a lot, like I said, and this makes it great because we work with a lot of different carriers. And if you do have pure and beams, it won't be a big deal with certain carriers, but with other carriers, it could be a, a massive deal. Mm -hmm. So these are the top four that I put together. I feel like a lot of the carriers do look for. Uh, I mean, they do run credit checks and stuff, just like anything else, but they don't look at it as hard as they do with these. Like, mm -hmm. is the house up today? You know, is it built after 1980 or pools, if they have those? Another one I didn't mention is dogs. So dogs are a huge thing with carriers. Um, I didn't realize this. <laughs> <laughs> until I started working here. So my family has pit bulls. We have pit bulls, family dogs, like that just live and love. I mean, they love everyone. A lot of carriers will not accept pit bulls, or if they do, you have to exclude it from your home policy and get like a separate policy for your dogs. And so, yeah, it's insane. So there's a lot of different dog breeds that we have to go through. Yes. And we ask those when we're going, I call it a discovery call. So when we're talking to the client, like, hey, do you have a pool? No, do you have, you know, a trampoline? Do you have dogs? Yes. What kind of dogs? And someone will say, what does that matter? I'll say, well, it helps you in the long run because for the one, I don't want to say, yes, you have a dog, not put the type in, get to the closing, and then all of a sudden it gets kicked back because, oh, you have this dog, we can't write the policy. So that's one of the important things I ask. I'm like, if you have dogs, great. I love dogs. I love pets in general. But I was like, let me know. That way I know what carriers I can run with personally that won't kick it back and I'll be able to get through the whole quote. You'll be able to get your insurance and everything squared away. So that's another big thing that they look for is dogs. Yes, yes. It's mind blowing. So what makes a good insurance policy? So here in Texas, we have, we offer four different water coverages. Uh, so sudden accidental, seepage, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, oh, you're good. Ellie, keep moving. It's not moving with her. All right. Sorry. You're good. So, certain carriers offer. Um, oh, look at that. Nice. Look at that. That's what I do. See, there we go. <laughs> Foundation and water backup, depending on the carrier. Some of them offer uh, three of them, some of them offer two of them. Just depends on what carrier we're working with. But this is a big one, especially here in Houston, because mm -hmm. I make sure I go over this thoroughly with every client. I'm like, hey, if this happens, you're, this doesn't cover, like if a flood happened, none of these are gonna matter because flood insurance is important. It's its own separate thing that you have to get. But I said, these are the water coverage that do uh, get included in your policy, depends on the carrier. One of the most common ones I see are water backup and seepage. So water backup, water's supposed to go down the pipes and not come back up. And so it's a, uh, we actually had uh, in my apartment, our dishwasher flooded. I mean, and so, I mean, I have renter's insurance because I'm in an apartment, but it made me think about that. It was like, this is why water backup is so important because stuff can happen out of nowhere. Oh, oh man, that was fun clean up. And then like a uh, seepage. So like, let's say you have a slow leak dripping uh, from behind your toilet. And then over time, it just builds up and builds up and builds up. By the time you notice, it's a huge puddle and like the foundation is probably ruined. If it's a, like a tile or something, you're starting to see like it um, degrade a little bit. So like that's why seepage is important because you're covered for that. So these are a lot of coverages that I'll walk through with every client. That way they know, hey, you're covered for this. I included this on your policy. It's your choice if you want to keep it or not. I personally recommend that you do because of X, Y, and Z. You know, uh, low deductibles. So you, uh, here goes an example. I saw a home policy and the person didn't know. And personally, I wouldn't have known either unless I'm in insurance. Their deductibles were 5% for wind and hell and all other perils. That is extremely high. Yeah. Yet it lowers your premium by a lot. But you think about it, let's say the winter storm and stuff that just happened. I had friends, roofs collapse. And you think about the home policy, it's like, mm -hmm. oh man, if their deductibles were 5% and they had a house that's like 580,000, 
dollars. And I mean, that's a lot of money, 5% of 580,000 that they're responsible for before their insurance can kick in, you know? And so understanding and explaining to the client, hey, your deductibles, I'm gonna keep at one to 2%. It could raise your premium just a little bit, but let me explain why that's gonna benefit you in a case of an emergency or something happens. Mm -hmm. And over time, like a lot of our carriers recommend one and 2% deductibles. And so anything else I see, I ask the carrier, hey, did you want this? Like, or the client, did you want this? If you did, perfectly fine, I can keep it the same. But do you understand what this means if you leave your deductible at 3%, 4%, 5%? And so I've been able to talk to a lot of my family about that because uh, they were just like, we just need home insurance. It's like, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I guess I need home insurance too. I don't know any better. And then replacement costs is a very big one. So there's actual cash value and then replacement costs. This is a great one to have, replacement costs. One, because it's much easier to deal with than actual cash value. And so... These are great things to have uh, on any home insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And these are things that I, I will recommend and walk through with every client. And here goes just some, well, fun facts, myths about flood coverages. Uh, homeowners policy covers flood damage. It does not. That's through FEMA. You have to get your own separate wow. uh, flood policy. I can't afford flood insurance. I mean, I always say this, I'm like, you get what's important to you. So if you know you need it, if you know you're living in, like I always use Leaf City because they're so close down there to the water. I mean, flood insurance, you, it's pretty smart to get it. You know, so I was just explaining, I'm like, this is what it is. Like if you don't get it and this happens, I mean, just know. But the thing is, most times you do have to pay outright and that can be daunting to a lot of people. They're like, that's $700, you know, that I have to pay outright. And I mean, we work with them, talk to carriers and figure out if there's something that they can do, but I always recommend uh, that they get it. Uh, I can just person flood insurance what I need it. And we talked about this earlier. It's like, you can't, like if you try to purchase flood insurance yeah. and the storm's coming next week, it's not gonna work. Like you have to wait 30, 30 days, days, at oh, least yeah. 30 days before your flood insurance kicks in. Uh, I don't live on the coast or in the flood zone. I always like this. 60% of homes in Houston that flooded in Harvey were in flood zone X, which doesn't require flood insurance. Yeah, and so it's dark. just, yeah. I just tell people it's better to be safe, to pay the extra to get flood insurance, even if you're not in the flood zone, than to not have it in which you would have paid to be mm -hmm. covered by everything that's happened. But, and here's just an example of like, some of, like we were talking about, like what do you pay typically? So for building, this is the one, these two right here, ones I recommend, just depends on the size of the house and the square footage. Mm -hmm. But let's just go with 200,000 for the building, 80,000 for the content. So like everything that's in there, I mean, it costs 487. You know, this is for the whole year. These is for houses that are not in, in flood zone. Mm -hmm. And so I walked through this with clients. I was just explaining the difference and everything. And depending on the carrier, which carrier we go through, I mean, rates can vary. Depends on if you're further up near Spring and Humble or if you're further down towards like Dickinson. I always say Dickinson and Lexi. I got family down there. So it's like down that way. But this is just like a chart. This is like what we see when we're running through a lot of our carriers. It gives like a breakdown. And I tell people, I say, you can make your choice. I said, if you only want to pay 300 bucks, I recommend just going with, I mean, it won't cover your full building. But if that's what you want to pay for, like by all means, go for it. Something is better than nothing. That's what I tell them. It's like, because you it could flood and your damage could only be like 38,000 and you have 50,000 for your building coverage. I was like, if that works for you, that's great. I just recommend get something like a little bit. It'll help you in the long run. But that's all I had. I mean, I just want to walk through a little bit, explain a little bit more about like what I do, uh, how I can fit in and help. Like if y'all need anything, we also do auto. I didn't talk about that a lot, but we do everything. Auto, boat, home, pets, pet insurance, trailers, uh, commercial. So a little bit of everything, but this is the heartbeat about what I do. I like to be very real and upfront. This is who I am, insurance with personality. But other than that, thank y'all. That is it. So what we'll do, Mark, is uh, if I can,
one of you to sub me, and then we'll come back and we'll just run like some questions and answers. Yeah. Uh, things that we can I, I do have a question for you. You ain't got to answer it now. But mm -hmm. I, I am. I, I, I don't know why credit does matter with insurance. Like, yeah. It's credit matter. But we'll answer that after you know people get there. Yeah. All right, come on, y'all eating? I don't want to come home to school. Y'all, <laughs> y'all learning? Y'all supposed to be lunching? <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from that. Good, good. Oh, shh. All right, I love that. I love that. I think that's the answer. I can get on the phone. Yeah, that's all good. Chicken breast, so it's really convinced me. Come on, yeah, it's good. Just keep that. I know. I right. about the chicken breast. Thank you. Feeling good. Oh, fun, man! I was just. We're talking about it. I'm trying to give you high five. It's okay. Ellie, give me high five. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My hands, my hands are all covered in lotion. I apologize. Okay, you good? Stop. I'm not gonna apologize. I'm not gonna apologize. I'm just gonna be you in that text. Yes. So 
It's one of those things that I'm still trying to figure out myself. Like I just know certain carriers, like they'll run a like a check on people, like just to see, all right, where's their carrier? I don't know why it makes a big difference, but it makes a huge difference when we're running rates because I can run that actuary. Yeah, people that like stretch you. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. because the, the policy is based on Yeah. Because I can run it with two carriers. Uh, there's this carrier, State Auto, we work with. And so, I mean, we work with a lot of big carriers. So, like, Progressive, Allstate, State Auto. Um, and the thing is, you can run a rate with State Auto, and it comes back, like, 3600 I'm like, what? And then you can run it with Progressive, and it comes back, like, 1800 And so, I don't know why credit has a big problem with it. I know we deal with a lot of, like, when we're dealing with mortgage lenders, a lot of them will send us their clients that have like DTI, like just too much like debt, like, and don't have a lot of income. And they're like, can y'all help them out? I'm like, yeah, we can. There's a lot of carriers that can help out. Um, and so, but the system on how they do it, I'm like, why does this, exactly, Mike, like, why does this matter if I'm like, it's my home insurance, like, yeah. And so I don't know why it has a big, a big weight on it. Um, 
That's actually be something I could ask my, my manager too. So that's the benefit cares. of you guys, like versus like a state farm or something like that. I don't know if state farm does it, but are you so you're a brokerage mm -hmm. and that's the benefit because you can yeah source out. Source out, yeah. And we're still, I mean, we're partnering with more and more companies. Like Allstate was the latest one that we started partnering with. And so that was huge. Because we get a lot of policies that are like, hey, we're paying this amount with Allstate. I'm like, perfect. We actually work with them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. and so it's just a matter of time. Well, it's never going to happen with State Farm. But my um, cousin, they just had a big insurance. I still don't know what it was. But big enough to where they sold their portion to State Farm. And I was like, first off, must be nice. Um, they got a 30 condos in Mexico. And I'm just like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So if y'all ever want to go to there in Puerto Vallarta, mm -hmm. so, nice. yeah, so we went there on a honeymoon, free mm -hmm. stay, and he goes, anytime you have friends that just want to go, we got like 30 condos, like right on the water, I was That's like, so I stay with the man, princess, princess, oh, princess. man, <laughs> Puerto Vallarta, it was, I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> very nice. I'm not with the, uh, you know, getting stuck over there with the COVID, <laughs> you know, <laughs> So that's not the answer. Elena, can you? Do you have any know, questions for Michael? I, I don't. I don't have any more other than like how how do they designate the flood zones? Yeah. Yeah. So and to me, that's such an income kind of a thing. Like mm -hmm. you could be here, or you could be here, and then you could be near each other. But I have the chat yeah. open too, guys. Yeah, yeah, you all. It, 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 it's crazy. Put your question in there. That. Like, and you're right. It's like how do they determine that? You know, and it's. It still blows me away because some zones are just way more expensive, and they're like, "Well, they they're easy, they're susceptible to floods." And I was like, "But you look in spring, and so parts." Well, I have friends in Humble that floods a lot. I didn't realize it, and that's why flood insurance there, depending on like the neighborhood, you know. And I was like, "Really?" It's like, "Yeah," because this part of Humble doesn't flood, but this here, because I used to work with elementary schools, I was a program director, so I oversaw fundraising before I started this, I was doing that for five years and school would get canceled because the floods would just flood the school or like neighborhoods would flood out. And I'm like, man, the rain wasn't even that bad. I was like, but it's just the area flooded. And so I think they do it just based on flood history, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, it's still, it's mind boggling though, you know, to think about like how certain areas. Well, are, I think, I mean, the water was pretty good, mm -hmm. but they're building so much over there, it's not going to be so good <laughs> because they're tearing down all the trees everywhere, left, right, everywhere, all around us. So I know we quote unquote have a green belt behind us, mm -hmm. but if they want to, they'll just dig somewhere else and then they'll rip up that green belt behind us mm -hmm. if they wanted to. Yeah. Land development, that's, that's just, Houston is just popping. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like, so you exactly. from Houston? So I have a question. There we go. Excellent. Okay, yeah, let's. <laughs> so, when you guys look at rates, since you are able to compare so many different other companies, at what number do you stop at? Like, do you feel like I have three rates, so you can choose between the three or the ten, or how do you guys do that? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So, I typically stop within like two to three because we what we have is a rater, and after we put in like underwriting information, like are you married, you know, the house and all that, like has a roof been replaced and all the questions that uh, are important when rating um, like a premium of a house, it'll draw back, I wish I had a picture of it. It will draw back like 10 to 12 different top carriers. I'll run rates based on what I see from the numbers. It gives you an estimate premium. And so for instance, I had a guy yesterday I was running rates for, it was like, oh, this one's 950. This one's uh, 1020. Mm -hmm. And then the third one was twelve or 2,500. I was like, okay, we're going to stop there. So then I just run the top two. And so, oh, cool. <laughs> hey, I'm like looking right in here. Yeah, so based on uh, what comes back after I run the underwriting questions, those are, that'll indicate like which carriers I would go with. And after we run it through the radar, it also takes into account the location of the house. So 2,400, it's not expensive in, let's say they're in Missouri City. Like you're like, wow, that's a high premium. I'm like, that's actually pretty normal. But sometimes carriers will give like breaks. They're like, okay, well, we're just going to charge this month. We're going to charge around this rate down here in this area. And so it varies a lot. 
Uh, but I always go with the cheapest thing for the client. And people are like, well, what if it's, you know, your commission, blah, blah. I said, I can care less about that. I'm in the business of making people happy. You know, that's that's uh, why I took this job. And uh, whatever cheapest rates I get with, all of our carriers are A-rated. And so, like, the only difference between them and, like, progressive is a lot of them you don't see advertising for. Mm. Um, on ins- Or, like, on TV or anything like that because they're all like regional. So you have a lot of carriers that are like in, you know, the Western part of the country that are now moving towards central. And so that's why you don't see a lot of commercials and stuff from like a, like an anchor insurance or allied trust or something Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. is that a lot of them spend their money more on their platform than they do on the advertising dollars. Mm -hmm. And so that was a long way to answer that, but I always run with the top two or three if the prices are, comparable and compatible. So is there ever a time where you would recommend to the client to go with a higher premium versus the cheapest one? Yes. And the only reason I would do that is if the carrier is offering the cheaper premium, if they don't include the water coverages that I want for the client. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend, uh, and I would break it down each, uh, each quote. And I'm like, hey, they're charging 1800 This one's charging 2200 I said, it's completely up to you, but let me tell you why I will go with the 2200 one. I said, it includes the word everyone loves, seepage. It includes <laughs> seepage. It includes uh, water backup. It also includes like foundation coverage. This carrier does not. Like this includes foundation coverage. So like if they were to break up your home and restore pipes, like all the um, money it will take to get that fixed and get your home resort, that'll be covered. And I was like, this policy has it, this one does not. The 2200 policy also has water backup. So water's supposed to go down, your pipe's not up. And like, it happens whenever you least expect it, like the storm, no one, I mean, I'm like, oh, it's gonna get cold. Cool, lights are off, that's great. Oh, no water. Now water's off. Now my dishwasher's flooding. Oh, that's perfect. And so we don't think about those coverages because you're like, oh, it can never happen to me. And so I would recommend that they go with the 2200 one. Um, but also I give them that freedom of speech. I said, hey, this is what I recommend. If you want to go with the 1800 one, I completely understand that. Like it's it's your money. You know, you can do exactly what you want with it. Like I support you either way. I'll walk you through the steps either way. Uh, but if you were to ask me, would I be willing to pay 400 more dollars for my premium? because it has X, Y, and Z coverage, hands down, I would say yes. Okay, I have a question. So, <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> hey, um, in, that, in, in, in a case where they choose to get the 2200 premium, and I'm sorry, um, well, either either premium or they get, and then they wanted to, you know, wait about a week or whatever, and they would change their mind and wanted to get the other one. Has that ever happened before, or can they do that, or how long do they have to wait if they wanted to, you know, change, uh, pick another one, or how does that go? Yeah, so, I mean, let's say they made their decision within, like, a, like two days. Like, I issued the policy, everything's good, and they're like, actually, we want to go with this one. For me, it's a simple process. All I have to do is we have a service team that takes care. They're solely dedicated or dedicated to taking care of the clients and their their needs. They deal with the talking to other carriers with payments and all that. So literally all I would have to do is like, okay, so you want to go with the other insurance now? I'm going to fax this information to the carrier, let them know effective, you know, let's say next week, uh, this policy will end. And then we'll contact your new carrier that you want and let them know, hey, this policy is going to begin on this day. And what will happen is uh, you'll get a prorated amount of the um, policy that you didn't use. This is where I always tell people, I say, you're going to get a check sent to your home for the policy that you did not use. You, uh, I recommend, highly recommend, highly recommend just send it back to your mortgage company and they can put it in your escrow account that way you're not being charged way more because they're like, oh, well, I guess they kept the check. Well, now they need to owe us that money. And so it's, I always recommend they send the check back and that way you can go into account. It can keep your payments low, uh, but it's a very simple process. This happened quite often. 
like I, I would say on average, we have people that have a policy for about two and a half, three months, and they just decided they didn't like it. And they're like, we want to switch. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so all I got to do is just look up the old, uh, the other quote that I ran for them. But here's where it gets tricky. It's like, because I had the date when I originally ran a quote, if, let's say I had the effective date for um, two days, two days ago, you know, on Monday, when I rerun a quote, because I had to rerun the whole thing, premium can go up because carriers can change it whenever they want to. I mean, and that's the only thing I just educate them about. I'm like, hey, so I know I ran the quote and it was 2200 this time. I'll have to rerun it because the date is way past us now. And there's a chance that the premium could go up. And so I just am pretty straightforward with them about that. But if they still want to switch, like it's a very easy process. And I'm like, yeah, I got you. Like, is the mortgage company still the same? Yep. Address still the same? Yep. And that's all I need to know. And then I can literally switch over their carrier. Long after an incident has occurred in the home or whatever, do you have to, I guess, report it to your insurance or is there a time frame? I don't, because I haven't dealt with that specifically. Okay. I'll just say ASAP. I mean, I think that's the, the best thing because if you let it go for a length of time, then they're just going to think if I'm like a an adjuster or like a, a claims person, it's like, so this happened a month ago, someone got hurt. They went to the hospital three weeks ago and it's a month now and now we're just hearing about it. I think, I mean, they possibly could still help out, but. Is that I guess for me, me. something with my balls, super balls? No, like for myself, oh. it's, you know, it could be mine and it's just me. Mm -hmm. I guess the whole real estate stuff, but as far as the insurance aspect of it, I had my home warranty, which I thought, so there's my toilet upstairs, but there's the gas kit attached to whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, rusted and so water was seeping through there. It's, Seepage. Right. So in my garage. Okay. Thank and you. so then I see that there's water dripping from my garage. And so I had the plumber come out and they actually had to remove my drop the drywall. Mm -hmm. So I got a big ass hole in my yeah. garage. So I so the home warranty, they wouldn't necessarily do anything. I didn't even think like, okay, would that be something that my home insurance would, would take mm -hmm. care of? But it's been dripping water. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that's, it, it, seep, that's what yeah. seepage does, though. It is over a long period of time, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not order. something. You just had the order. Yeah. 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 Because it's not something you notice. It's not something you notice, right? Like right off the bat. No cause. I mean, I mean, I guess it means no person, right? I know, right? We didn't have no issues. But I guess, but I think what he was saying is, you got to, and you just got to make sure that seepage is covered in your policy. Yeah. Cause, it, cause like, I mean, for like a toilet or something, you don't realize it until, I mean, it can be going. So it's, um, with seepage, like it's up to four, like 14 days. Let's say if it's past that mark and you don't have it, you don't have seepage, then your insurance like, well, I mean, they could help you. They could not like, it depends <laughs> on how they are, but it's so covered because a little drop behind your toilet, like you're not going to notice that like right away, unless you're OCD like me. And I'm just like, I hear something. <laughs> I lay down in bed. I'm like, what was that? Anyway, but like, over it's gonna happen over time. And so, if you have it on your policy, your insurance will help you out. You're like, I just noticed this. There's a big, um, like, uh, molded spot right here where everything's been dripping. And I'm like, this is covered under my insurance, and I'm just now noticing it. Yeah, you can file. Okay. Um, but having had the plumber come out and make that. That was my um, question. Up that mm -hmm. mess up there or whatnot. Is that something that they would, they would want to see receipt of? Or um, I think it'd be great to provide that. Yeah. Yeah. If we're gonna do it, we gotta mm -hmm. think of every aspect. Yeah. Get the receipt correct. That 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 would be a big thing too, because it just shows proof. Like, hey, look, this is what what happened. This is when they came out to get it. And then that's why foundation coverage is really important. I tell people to get because it helps repair whatever's been because plumbers come up, rip it up. Sometimes they won't put it back together. You know, they just, their job is to get to the pipes and fix it. And it's not their job to patch everything up. And so your insurance, when we have foundation coverage, that's when that really kicks in to come in and help. But it helps with, it helps with uh, your proof. You know, if you're like, hey, they did come out. This is what they did. 
because it gives you ammo to back up on. They're like, did you just rip this up? It's like, nope. This is a receipt. This is one. This was done. What, what's foundation? Yeah. Oh, so foundation coverage. Yeah. So exactly, because you let it right into it. So foundation coverage. Uh, exactly. So a plumber comes out. Hey, you have a busted pipe. They got to get to it. If they rip that up, because they're going to have to rip it up, mm, drywall and stuff. I mean, the chance that they don't patch it up. They're like, I don't know how to do that. Like, I'm just... I just know how to <laughs> know, work on pipes, you know, and like foundation coverage will help restore that back so if it's in your home true. policy. Yeah. Majority, yeah, majority of them, majority of homeowner or home policies should have it included in there. It's just that if you do have it, go read my <laughs> just go through it to see if you do have, like, because a lot of care or people won't spend the time to go through it with you. They're like, there goes your own policy. You have this, 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 and then here's your premium. You're good to go. And so that's why I like to just go through everything and with foundation coverage, I make sure that's in every single policy because I have my little brother's a plumber and like, well, granted, he's a jack of all trades, so he can break <laughs> something, can fix it, it patch it up and hot wire your car. He can do everything. <laughs> um, but foundation coverage is very, very like important. I didn't even know you could get foundation coverage. I thought you could just get my deductible too high. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I have a question oh, about got um, Oh yeah. 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 Why so is it that like if, if somebody passes away without a will and and so say for instance their child takes over the property, mm -hmm. why can't that child insure the property if it's not necessarily left in their name? That's a great question. That's the first time I ever heard that too. Like I'll have to figure uh get back to you on that. Like okay. so it's not in your name. That's the key right. to it all. Yeah. You can't insure something that's not in your name, but maybe you can do renters insurance or some kind of like secondary insurance. Yeah. But if you have a death certificate, and this I have a mm -hmm. death certificate certificate. This is my mom. She died without a will, but I'm the heir. Why can't I get insurance? I'm here, I'm paying the mortgage. The mortgage company didn't ask me for nothing. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no, like somebody's saying, the mortgage company didn't ask me for nothing, but they insurance is like, so oh no. It's technically mm -hmm. not, it's not, I see what you're saying. I tell you, mm -hmm. it's not, the, the house is not in your neck because y'all haven't gone through the probate process. That's right. That's the yeah. mm -hmm. It's not that's Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's still in the state. Mm -hmm. Mortgage company sure, didn't tell me what my. <laughs> but now it's I do have a, but right, now what if, what if, what if that scenario happens and since we're just running what ifs? That scenario happens if somebody has insurance and they pass away and then something happens to the house. Oh, now, how does that work? Man. <laughs> they sent a check yeah, the, yeah. in my grandmother's name. They're like, <laughs> they're like, we shall found them. They was like, women's Lucille, she's not here. And they sent the check. They sent the check in her name. <laughs> they sent the check in her name. And I'm like, what are we supposed to do with this? And it was like, hey, hey it's up to y'all. You have the ID? The insurance did what it was supposed to do. They did what it was supposed to do. Wow. That was oh, it. Like, I can get a cash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm innocent over here. <laughs> yeah, so my mom is like, you know, she's really over the suffering because, I mean, she can't get insurance wow. on the property. Look, we, we just went through all this, and she's like, I have no insurance. And I'm like, thank you for hitting my pockets because that's what's going to happen. Ah. Mm. Um, but, you know. That is a... Wow. I mean, that's a really like. Questions, they should have like a gap insurance. Something like, between, between inheritance. Yeah. Inheritance insurance. Yeah. Huh? Got a gap for you right quick hmm. until you get the paperwork. There's a car. You can yeah. create that. Look, create that. Yeah. Right on. There you go. I'm trying to go famous. That way I can retire. You can definitely retire. Really retire. You know how many yeah, people have that issue? And, and, and you know, and, and, yeah. how many people have that issue where people die without wheels? Mm hmm. And then, you know, the, the survivors or the heirs or whatever. I mean, can you imagine how many people don't have insurance because they can't yeah. probate the property or whatever? Yeah. You know, that's just, it's a lot of people out there like that. I wonder if it's worth like reaching out to the carriers too and like, because I, I feel like in some capacity, the carriers have dealt with it. Um, it's just asking the right questions. Like, for instance, if my mom, my mom is, hmm. My mom lives at my grandpa's house. This is weird. But the insurance is in my aunt's name. Oh, I don't know. But I think it's worth reaching out to the carrier and see, like, 
what do I need to do? Like, there has to be some way to get the insurance in my name because this person is no longer here. Now the house is not, in, I mean, is it insured? Is it not? Like, you know, and it's a question for like that specific carrier or even like the the mortgage company, like, hey, or well, mortgage company. So. You don't want to tell too many people, yeah. too many things. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, you know, so. It's just asking the right questions and getting to, like, just give me a As touch a realtor, someone. I have a client. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My client. Um, mm -hmm. he's assistant for the business. But yeah, I just it, it can be a pain in the butt. And I'll just, you know, I'm like, we call I mean we talk to so many insurance companies. Um and now the mortgage is paid for, the home is fully mm -hmm. paid off. And so the homeowner's insurance that was with the mortgage company is gone. Mm. And you know that was some expensive homeowners insurance, mm -hmm. but we had no other option at that point. Wow. And, and y'all, y'all can't just probate. Mm. You know Can how you they know. just feel me saying <laughs> I don't want them hitting my pockets because guess who's gonna pay for that? It's worth it. Though. Oh, oh <laughs> man, that look. It's worth it <laughs> no, it's worth I'm it. just saying, man. Strawberries ain't hitting. You right. <laughs> I was thinking that when I ate when I ate them earlier, that's the first thought I had. Like Lisa, why these strawberries? They wouldn't. They wouldn't. But yeah, I ain't never had a not sweet strawberry. How you suck the sweetness out of a strawberry? Bill Gates did it. Come on, Val. You got this, Val. Oh man, They about to make me go back to school for this master's degree. I'm gonna come a lawyer myself. Our some stuff. Woo. All right. Well, people, that's officially it. Unless y'all have any other questions, we're gonna shut the zoom down. Um, you have any other any questions, Elizabeth? No, I don't. Um, I'm fine. Thank you. Did you learn a lot today? I did. I have my little cheat sheet over here. <laughs> so if I have any more you. questions, yes, if I have any more questions, I'll definitely be contacting. Absolutely. Well, we 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 got Michael in the. He's in the group. He's in a private group now. So if you have any insurance questions, you can reach out. You know, put put them in there, and Michael can reach back out to you. I sure will. Thank you so much, Michael, for your time. All right. Talk to you later.